Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to set up Cassandra on local and make it up and running. There are two other videos I made earlier on when to use Cassandra and when not to use Cassandra. But as a software engineer, it is extremely important to make your hands dirty. So here we'll go to the Apache Cassandra website, we'll download the Apache Cassandra and then we'll make it up and running. In the later part of the video, we'll also explore CQL, which is Cassandra query language. And that is similar to SQL or CQL, that is structured query language. So let's get started. Well, a single machine in a Cassandra cluster does not make any sense. There has to be multiple machines in the cluster so that when one goes down, other would come up. But for this video, I will have just one dev machine. That is my own machine where I will install the Cassandra so that you can have your learning experience and then you can kickstart your learning with Cassandra. All right. Now we'll go to cassandra.apache.org slash downloads. And from here, we'll find the various versions of Cassandra. I'll click on the GA version and it will take me to the downloads link. From here, I will be able to download the zipped folder for Cassandra. I also need to make sure that I have Python installed in my machine. To be more specific, Python 2.7. So you can install one of the versions of Python, be it Windows or Linux or Mac and set up your environment variable. So once you are done with this, you can go to your downloads and unzip the Cassandra. So if you click on it, for example, in Mac, you will be able to unzip it. And then from here, I will copy this whole folder to my software folder because that's what I generally do and then open my terminal. So let me quickly copy it from here. So I have already done that. I have already copied one of the Cassandra versions here. It's you will notice it's 4.0.6 but it is no different than 4.0.7. So I'll go here and then open my terminal and go to this particular folder. So for this, do command space terminal. So I am already in the bin folder. Now, before running Cassandra, we'll need to set up a few of the environment variables. So let's do that first. So I'll open bash profile and here you can see I have set up environment variables. The first one is Cassandra home which points to the Cassandra folder where I have copied the downloaded Cassandra unzipped. Then there is a path for Cassandra and then there is a Java home because Cassandra runs on Java. Please note that the Java version I am using is JDK 11. You can also use JDK 8. But when I was running with JDK 19, there were a couple of errors which were coming up. So I would suggest that you can go ahead with versions lesser than JDK 11. You can also find the, the versions which are compatible with Cassandra. Once you do that, you can run bash profile. In this way, all the environment variables will be loaded. We'll also need to do a few more things. Let's go to the folder where Cassandra was downloaded. Here you will see two folders I created. One is the logs folder and the data folder. You need to create both of them and then go to conf. And here you will file logback.xml. This is the file which is responsible for generating the Cassandra logs. What you can do is you can open in your favorite editing software and here you will need to do one thing that is set up the path of the log file. So for me, I have set up this as a log file. Essentially what you will need to do is to replace Cassandra.logdir to the full path. So for example, you can replace it with the path where the Cassandra was installed, which in this case is this path. So I will copy this, go to my editor and paste it and I'll click on replace all. In this way, my paths will be replaced with the logging folder. Once this is done, we are ready to launch our Cassandra. Launching the Cassandra is quite simple. 
all you need to do is to go to the terminal and run Cassandra minus F. Now you can see that Cassandra has launched in my machine. I'll open another terminal and using that terminal, I'll connect to Cassandra. And here, I will go to the bin folder of Cassandra. And then I will run SQL SH. When I run this, you can see that by default, it connects to the local cluster that is 127.0.0.1 colon 9042. So these are the default configuration of the Cassandra which I launched some time back. Here the local Cassandra is running and in the new tab I have been able to connect to that Cassandra using CQLSH. Now what is CQL? CQL is nothing but Cassandra query language which means that you can run the queries against Cassandra just like you run queries against SQL database. Now in Cassandra, we have something called as key spaces. So here we'll do describe key space. Okay, it should be describe key spaces. So if I do that, you will see there are multiple key spaces which are created in Cassandra cluster. There are a few which start with system and we are not going to touch them. They are for the internal usage of Cassandra and there are few which I created for myself. For example, here is a school. Before going further, let me quickly explain you the Cassandra data model and how it looks like. So at the top level, you have cluster. That is, in this case, we connected to a local host cluster. A cluster can have multiple key spaces. So key spaces are just like databases in relational database. Within those key spaces, there can be multiple tables. So they are just like the tables in the relational databases. And within those tables will be rows and columns. So you can clearly map how the things look like in the relational databases. And they are the same in case of uh, Cassandra as well. So you have cluster which in our case is localhost 9042, you can have a key space that is just like a database. So for example, school is a key space. Then you have tables and there can be multiple tables like student table, teacher table, etc. within the school database. And then there are rows and columns within each table. So they would be, for example, name equal to one etc. etc. and et cetera. So this is how the basic modeling in Cassandra look like. Now back to Cassandra terminal. Now here I will drop a key space which I created some time back and this will drop the particular key space and you can see here that whenever I delete a key space the corresponding SS table etc gets deleted. Let's not bother what are these things but you can clearly notice that the operations I do there in the terminal does affect the Cassandra cluster as well. Also, you will notice that this CQL terminal is very helpful. So for example, here I write DR and I press tab. It does the auto completion. Then if I press tab, it also gives me a lot of suggestions. So this is in a way, a first class citizen to do a lot of operations in Cassandra. It helps us, especially the relational database engineers to quickly onboard to Cassandra. Now let's create a key space with the same name. So it will be create key space school with replication class. I'll give simple strategy replication factor as one. All right, I see I have missed a closing bracket. Yes, now I have created a key space. Let me quickly clear the screen. You can do this by writing clear.
now let's see if the key space has been created or not for this i will have describe key spaces and you can see that the key space got created we can also describe the given key space as well and you can see this is how the key space was created there are a couple of configurations like network strategy which is simple strategy here and replication factor which is set as one here to give you a little idea there are multiple network topology strategies one of those is simple strategy where the replicas are created for the node to the adjacent nodes and there is a network topology strategy which is used across data centers so since we are running things on local i have chosen simple strategy there is something called as replication factors which is helpful for having the copy of a data in multiple machines again since we have just one machine running on local i have set up the replication factor as one durable writes are true by default we'll get on to the details in possibly the next videos but for this video we'll keep it simple now we'll switch to the key space which we have created in this case it is school now the command is again similar to relational database please note that now the terminal has changed to sql sh colon school you can choose not to do that but in that case you will need to refer all the tables with fully qualified name for example school dot table name school two dot table name two etc so here since i have switched to school now it will be easy for me to create tables and not always put school dot in everything now creation of table is also straightforward all i need to do is write the create table command you can notice that there is a data type called as uuid likewise there are multiple data types and all of them can correspond to one or the other data type in relational database as well in fact the data types in cassandra are much more exhausted we can also define primary key now you can see that the table got created also note that there are double brackets here so this is helpful in having two types of primary keys one is used to decide the node in the cassandra cluster that is in which node the data will go to and the other are the clustering keys which helps in the sorting etc but for this video we'll have just one primary key now we can describe this table as well so you can see there is this one table which is created and now you can see the things which are associated with this student table there are a lot of things which are configured for a particular table but for this video again we'll keep it simple i will clear the window now let's enter a few data into this table entering the data is also quite straightforward we have command similar to relational database again you can see i have added one student i will add one more and then we'll do a select statement as well
Now I have added two students into the table. Let's do a select star. You can see there are two items which have been added to the students table. Now let's try to query from this table. We can have filters in this table as well. I will copy this ID. and paste here. You can see that my select statement is also working. However, there is this one limitation in Cassandra that I can query only by primary key, which is in this case, the ID column. If I try to query by name, I will get error. Let's try that. You can see I am getting invalid query error. The reason is that the distribution of data across clusters in Cassandra happen with the help of primary key. Now in this case, the primary key was ID. If you do not provide primary key in the filtering in the where clause, it gets hard for Cassandra and it has to scan all the nodes. Hence, you must have a filter by primary key only. If you want filtering by other nodes, you need to provide allow filtering. Also, Cassandra says that in such cases, the performance will be unpredictable. But nevertheless, let's try that. Now you can see we got the data. However, we also need to keep in mind that allow filtering is not something which you would want to do. This is something which you would have to do at times. And in such cases, it will be better to have a separate table or there are several other concepts in Cassandra using which you can achieve this. Likewise, you can update as well. Now, if I do select star from student, I will see that the name is changed. Again, if you see the where clause, I had to put ID. Let's see what happens if I put age. You can see again, it gives me the error. So we can clearly see that the ID column, which was the primary key was a must. Just like the SQL query, we can also truncate the table. By truncate, what it will do is that it will delete all the rows in the table. Now let's see what is the data available in the student table. You can see nothing is available. Finally, we can also have a drop statement. When I do that, the table will be dropped. Now if I do describe, you can see no table was returned. Whereas earlier describe tables was returning one table. This concludes the very simple setup of Cassandra. You should go ahead and read more about it. In fact, I would recommend you to go through the book name Cassandra the Definitive Guide. You can see that this book is available in various platforms and I have also gone through this book. This book is very, very helpful. They explain things in quite detail and in fact, you can download the free copy of it from the data stacks website. Just go to this website, click on get free digital copy and you need to fill in a bunch of details. I have not seen them spamming till now. You can fill your details and download the free copy. This concludes the very simple setup of Cassandra. Thanks for watching the video. In this video, I have covered how to install Cassandra on your dev machine and get your hands dirty. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. It really makes a difference. Till the next time, bye.